Hello. Can you hear me, guys? Me escuchan. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you? How is everyone doing? Very good. Thank you. How are you? Oh, rushing. <laughs> Running <laughs> to be for the class. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How was your day? It's almost Friday, guys. Almost. Yeah. Almost there. <laughs> Just a few more hours. Do you have plans for the weekend? Yes, I have plans. In, in my case, I have plans with my family and uh, we plan to go to the Casa Cristal. <laughs> Where is that? And isn't that like um, via Vulcan de Santa Ana? I've never heard of it. Casa de Cristal. Is that like a museum or something? No, it's like um, a camping song. <gasps> I'm in the interested mountain. now. <laughs> I'm gonna look for it on Instagram. <laughs> it's it's near to San Blas. Oh, I see. I see. I think we can locate it. Hey, that's cool that we have those places in El Salvador. You know, one of the problems in El Salvador, there are not many places to go to. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's mm. very true. <laughs> Who else? What about you guys? What about the others? Do you have plans for the weekend? Veamos los demás, do you have plans? Hi. Hi, let's see. Hi. You... <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let's see, Carlos, what are your plans for the weekend? What? What are your plans for the weekend? Uh, Saturday, I want to rest <laughs> because, because uh, Sunday I'm going to work. Oh, working on Sunday, that sucks, <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. Well, at least you will have Saturday. <laughs> Hopefully you get to rest. Uh, how do you say <laughs> anymore? <laughs> anyways. Anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you guys remember what we were talking about yesterday? ¿Te acuerdan de que estábamos hablando ayer? The use of should and shouldn't. Exactly, we were seeing the use of should and shouldn't, and we were doing a, a brief review on vocabulary for inventory, right, or manufacturing, basically, if you remember. Now, again, I know not everyone works in manufacturing here, but for this unit, that is the topic, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let me show you the presentation one minute. Bear with me for a moment. Ya le comparto la pantalla. And you should see it right now. Okay. Alguien escribe en el chat. Dice Jacqueline Pérez. Okay, Jacqueline, gracias por avisar. All right. I want you to take a look at this diagram, okay? This diagram of production, okay? If you see, we get from the raw material, raw material, which is the fresh oranges, right? That's gonna be the raw material. Como la materia prima o el material sin procesar, las naranjillas frescas, right? Fresh oranges. From there, they go to the factory, they wash them. So you can see all of the steps, the different steps in here, okay? So I need um, someone to help me read what it's in there. So we have, we need three volunteers, porque hay tres párrafos. So let's, have three volunteers to read what's in there. Ocupamos tres voluntarios, veamos. Lucy, you're going to help me with the first paragraph, please. Carlos, help me with the second one, please. And we need one more volunteer for the third paragraph, para el tercer párrafo. Isabel, help me with the third paragraph, please. Me? Yes, Isabel, you will be the third paragraph, el tercer. <clears throat> the first okay. paragraph? Yes. Okay. Iniciamos. Lucy, please. The process describes the manufacture of orange juice. There are 14 main stages in the whole orange juice producing, producing process, beginning with collecting fresh oranges and ending with distribu distribu distribution. Dis distributing. Distributing, thank you, product to supermarkets. All right. Very good, Lucy. Así como dijo acá, oranges. Porque termina así, acá es stages. 
En plural, stages. Yes, very good. Thank you. Number two. Number two, paragraph number two. Carlos. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, firstly, fresh oranges are delivered to factory and they are washed before extraction. Then salt waste and juice are separated by squeezer. Mm -hmm. One becomes animal food. The other is mixed with water to make orange with juice. Mm -hmm. In the next stage, orange juice can either be packed to move to supermarket or transferred to another step performed by evaporator machine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Number three. Okay. In the evaporation process, the water from fresh orange juice will be removed. Following this, the concentrated juice is canned and then transferred to warehouse. Before packaging, water is added to each can. The entire orange juice producing process conclude after orange juice boxes are delivered to supermarket. All right. So what you guys are reading is the process that we have here in pictures, okay? From the moment that you get the oranges, there are 14 steps that go into producing the different types of juice, right? So this is just for reference, basically, right? It's not, it's not that you're gonna do it or anything like that. But I want you to take this, take a good look. Because we're gonna use it for reference for the next exercise, okay? So for the practice time, you're going to discuss with your classmates about their work processes. And you're going to retell them in third person. And then you're going to share with the class, okay? So we're going to go to the breakout rooms. Vamos a ir a los breakout rooms, vamos a las salas. Y vamos a trabajar en pareja o en grupo de tres. La idea es que ustedes, cada uno de ustedes, le va a decir el proceso desde la A hasta la Z de una de las cosas que ustedes hacen en el trabajo a su compañero o compañera. Cuando regresemos de las salas a la sesión, usted me va a contar lo que le dijo su compañera. Fulanito, fulanita, starts the day with this and this and this. After that, she or he does this and she has to do this and she never does this or sometimes she does this, etc. Usted va a hablar en tercera persona. Hasta ahorita ustedes habían practicado comentar sus procesos y todos se hicieron cargo de contar sus procesos personalmente en primera persona, right? Now we're going to discuss it and you're going to retell the story in third person. Ustedes me van a contar lo que sus otros compañeros o compañeras hacen. Vuelvo y repito, sé que no todos estamos en manufacturing, en producción. Um, so no importa. Cualquier cosa del proceso de contestarle a un cliente si usted es servicio al cliente o si cualquier cosa que usted haga en su oficina. Uno de, uno de sus procesos lo de la A a la Z, cómo lo hace, paso a paso, y la otra persona lo va a contar en tercera persona cuando regresemos, ¿ok? Si son tres en el grupo, pues ya saben, uno cuenta el del otro y así, All right? So, I'm going to give you six to seven minutes for this. Le voy a dar de seis a siete minutos para este, porque la idea es que no se tarden más de un minuto en contarlo y en otro minuto en que ustedes lo reproduzcan en tercera persona, ¿ok? And then when we come back, ustedes me van a contar en tercera persona o en plural lo que sus otros compañeros o compañeras hacen. Okay? Give me one moment. We're going to open the breakout rooms. And here we go. Ahorita les va a aparecer el pop-up para que ingresen a las salas y empiecen a trabajar desde el momento en que están todos ya conectados. Ahorita son las 8 y 10. Acuérdense que van a tener de 6 a 7 minutos más o menos. Yo les voy a avisar igual. Y ahora ya, ya todos pueden ingresar.
el sí, Noemí, ¿qué le pasó? El sí, Noemí está por ahí. Y Wendy Flores también. Teacher, ¿por qué será que siempre que me mete un grupo siempre me saca? No sé, pero ahorita la voy a mover y le da a entrar, porfa. Okay. Ya tendría que estar entrando Wendy. No la deja o no le está, no le da. No me da nada. Porque si ya lo movió. Hoy sí. Ok. Wendy logró incorporarse a la sala.
¿Qué le pasó, Wendy? Me volví a sacar, dice, cuando me metí, no me dejaba entrar de nuevo. Pero fíjese que a mí me parece que usted se salió, así que yo creo, no sé si usted se sale por error o es su internet, pero sí me parece que usted se salió, de lo, se, está, sale, se sale del grupo. Entonces, fíjese que yo solo le, doy, a, solo le doy a aceptar y de ahí me saca de un solo. Uh -huh. Quizás es su internet que le está dando problemas, Wendy. Es de verificar. Okay. ok. Cintia, ¿ya terminaron en su grupo, Cintia? ¿O va entrando usted? Me escucha, Cintia. Hello, ¿me escucha, Cintia? Hoy sí, ya la escucho. <risa> Cintia, ¿eso estaba en algún grupo? Fíjese que acaba de entrar porque me costó y sí estaba con alguien, pero de repente me volví a salir. Ok, vaya. Igual, igual ahorita ya van a regresar, así que solo tienen 40 segundos y regresan, así que esperamos ahorita. Ok, muchas gracias. Ok, ya estamos todos de regreso. Antes de que empiecen a compartir lo de sus compañeros, vamos a pasarles lista. Jueves, jueves 30 sería. En, iniciamos con Adriana María Turcios. Present. Thank you. Carlos Ernesto Hernández. Present. Thank you. Cristina Edith Ramos. Present. Thank you. Cintia Arabella Abrego. Present. Thank you. Daniel Freddy Serabia. Present. Thank you. Elsie Noemi Alemán. Present. Thank you. Fermán Alexander Mismit. I am here, teacher. Thank you. Hazel Saraí Renderos. Hazel Saraí Renderos. Héctor Francisco Morales. Present, teacher. Thank you. Irma Beatriz Molina. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Isabel Hernández. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jacqueline Lisette Salguero. Present. Thank you. Carla Raquel Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Ayer no vino, ¿verdad, Carla? No, teacher. Ah, ok. Ya hablé uh, con el de inglés corporativo. Perfect. Thank you. Carla Yesenia Lanza. Carla Yesenia Lanza. Lucy Natalie Juárez. Present. Thank you. Mayra Yesenia Vigil. Present. Thank you. Salvador Emilio de León. Present, Maya here. Thank you. Ulises Edgardo Jacobo. Ulises Edgardo Jacobo. Wendy Guadalupe Flores. I am here. Thank you. And Jancy Maritza Solis. Jancy Maritza Solis. Ok, esos serían todos los de la lista para la primera llamada. Vamos a continuar con la clase. Give me one minute. Ok, so we were going to retail. We're going to narrate what our classmates do. Uno de los procesos que nuestros compañeros nos contaron, right? So we have room number one. Tenemos a Adriana, María, Carlos, Ernesto, El Mayra y Esenia. ¿Quién va a iniciar? Las chicas. Ok. Ok. 
Go ahead, Adriana o Mayra. Room number one, ¿quién va a iniciar? Comienzo yo, teacher. Me. Ok. Ok. Mayra, tell me your process. Hair process. Hair process to pay a labor. Ok. Hair receive the tech she, she receives. He receives the tech pack. Mm -hmm. Next, review the design. She reviews the design. She reviews the design. Mm -hmm. She describes step by step the sewing process. Mm -hmm. She calculates the time sewing. Mm -hmm. And she finally maintains the grade down system. Very good. Thank you, Adriana. Y si se fijan, ya cuando estamos contando lo que otra persona hace, ya ahí viene eh, en presente el tiempo, cuando viene en juego, simple present, third person, ¿verdad? Tercera persona, presente simple, versión afirmativa. ¿Qué hago yo cuando estoy hablando así? Le agrego ese a mi verbo porque estoy hablando en tercera persona. All right? Y siempre para cada oración pongo he o she o fulanito o fulanita porque cada una lleva su sujeto, verbo, complemento. All right? Very good. ¿Quién sigue del grupo uno? Amy. All right. Ok. Carlos Ward as instructor, instructor, instructor man, Montaigne. Maintenance. 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 Uh -huh. Ok. First. Eh, ¿Cómo dijimos with... esta palabra, Mayra? First. Uh -huh. Ajá. <laughs> First, we meet with, with the boss to define the activity. We or he? He meets with the boss. He meet with. He's the boss. Uh -huh. He's... Uh -huh. To define the activity. Ok. Then he travels to the plant perform, perform maintenance. 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 Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Maintenance. Mm -hmm. Finish the job and return to, to his station and fire, fire out a repo. Very good. Thank you, Mayra. Vamos con Carlos, entonces. Okay. Uh... I am going to say uh, what what to do, Adriana. What Adriana does. What Adriana does. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, Adriana works in a manufacturing. Okay. And uh, number two, uh, she cuts the cloth. And uh, finally, uh, printing the t-shirt. She prints. She prints, okay. uh -huh. she prints the t-shirts. Correct, very good, room number one. <laughs> y si ya se fijaron todos, que ya no es la misma historia cuando estoy conversando sobre alguien más, right? Cuando se dan información de alguien más, que es algo que nos va a tocar hacer en la vida real de vez en cuando, when we're speaking in another language, right? Very good, thank you, room number one. Very good job. Let's go with room number two. Herman, Irma, and Jacqueline, please. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. <laughs> eh, comenzaré yo a, a la introducción. Okay. Y son cuatro puntos. Eh, los primeros dos los hará Jacqueline y los otros dos los finalizará Irma. All right. Okay. Jacqueline started with us in what uh, she worked. She worked in a cargo company. She works. She works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Hi. Uh, I don't know if you. 
¿verdad? Okay. Creo, eh, creo que tiene problemas. Si gusta, porque ella escribió que creo que tenía problemitas, okay. pero sí participó. Okay. Hago yo los fotos de ella y, y se. Perfecto. Loading order is received. Eh, step one. Loading uh -huh. order is received. Receive. Step two. Receive. Receive. Uh -huh. so, step two. The truck arrives to the warehouse customer. Uh -huh. And step three and step four. And lo dirá <laughs> eh, Irma. Okay. Uh, the truck goes to the customer warehouse. Uh, pick up the product customer. I take uh, it take. It takes. It takes to Central America. All right. Están describiendo el proceso de quién, me dijo Germán. De Jacqueline. De Jacqueline. All right. Jacqueline. Thank you. Bueno, lo hicieron entre los dos, así que ya estuvo la participación. Thank you, room number two, for the effort. A veces es más difícil cuando a alguien le falla el internet, pero lograron solucionar. So, thank you. Room number four, we're going with Daniel, Freddy, Hazel, and Salvador. Okay, okay. Uh... Comenzamos, Salvador. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, good night, everyone. Uh, my my com uh, my friend Daniel. Every day, uh, in his job, first turn on the computer. Turns on. Ah, uh, turns on. Mm -hmm. Turns on. Turn, turns mm -hmm. on the computer, and then uh, check the the he reports. Checks. The checks. He checks. He checks. He checks. Mm -hmm. He checks the reports the the last day. Mm -hmm. uh, next, uh, he checks the mails, and. Uh, a middle in the morning, he goes uh, to inspect. How do you inspect? Inspect. Inspect the field, the security, uh, security equipment in the in the all Equip personnel. Equipment. Equipment. Mm -hmm. For all the personnel. The okay. all personnel. Okay. Very That's good. It. Thank you. Next. Okay. Uh, Salvador. In the morning, he's arrived the job. He arrives to his job. The job. Uh -huh. Repitamos. He, he arrives to his job. Job. Uh -huh. He turned on the computer. Mm -hmm. He check checks. the old email. Check. Checks. Suena la S. Okay. Checks the email. Uh -huh. He check email per or uh -huh. or arrive the flight okay or see the package and document that arrived important for the company uh -huh. only all right thank you and hazel hazel is still going Ah, ok. All right, then. Thank you. Vamos con el room number five, then. Héctor Francisco and Lucy Natalie, please. Good evening. Good evening. Héctor, work process consists and participates in environment and natural resources in Sonsonate Department. His activities specifically, specifically are involved specifically. in the... <laughs> Specifically, are, are involved in the forestation projects like sweet water fish production and natural protected areas. Ooh, very interesting. Thank you, Lucy. Hector? Eh, teacher, todavía no he llegado a casa, por eso lo voy a, no, no he conectado mi, mi cámara. Ah, okay. Pero, eh, eh, Lucy, Lucy studied industrial engineer. Eh, she works in security, health, and environment protection in construction construction project. She likes work on, on field. That's it, teacher. 
All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the effort, Hector. We're going with room number six now, which is Christina Edith and Carla Raquel. Okay. Um, Carla is a super supervisor. Supervisor. The, supervisor uh -huh. in the group loops in Santa Ana. Okay. Uh, she said, uh, the production goals of the personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, she check checks mm -hmm. staff every day. Um, checks email in the morning. She moves also reports result result results uh, result at the end of the every day. Very good. Thank you, Christina. Carla? Okay. My friend Christina is a customer support person at Banco Atlantida. She checking card to resolve problem with online banking and ATM in the country. She received approximately 30 cards a day. All right. That's it? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, room number six. And we go with room number seven, which is Elsie Noemi and Isabel Hernandez. Okay. I start, Isabel. Okay. <clears throat> I start. Okay. Uh, Isabel, uh, is a distribution control system operator. Um, he start at 8 a.m. his job. Um, the first check, check email, next check system, customer orders, verify in the system that the order and the verify verifies. Verify in, verify mm -hmm. in the system that the order is ready. Mm -hmm. He authorizes the transfer of merchants, merchandise, merchandise. Mm -hmm. Finality document finally. is given. Finally, document is given to the traveler. All right. Thank you, Elsie. Isabel. <clears throat> okay. Elsie Noemi is a, she is an administrative assistant. Her day starts at eight o'clock a.m. She must check the email and replay the email too. She has to prepare a meeting and, and then she has to review the post schedule and also coordinate the work of the staff. And finally, answer call too. Answer calls too. All right, thank you. Now, very important. Eh, esto va como a, 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 en general. Tratemos de repasar simple present, third person affirmatives. Tratemos de hacer más ejercicios por nuestro lado, en tercera persona afirmativa, simple present, right? La idea de estos ejercicios es que se no, que no, ¿cómo les explico? La idea es que no vayan solo pasando de temas, sino que los vayan usando, que los vayan incorporando en lo que traen ahora. Ahora estamos viendo should, shouldn't, uh, manufacturing process, inventory vocabulary, y encima de todo eso, ya le traen, le incorporan la gramática que ustedes ya traen desde los módulos anteriores, ok? So very good, overall we're really good, it's just a matter of refreshing, solo se trata de que recordemos, de que repasemos eso básico para que lo acompañemos con lo que estamos viendo ahorita, ¿de acuerdo? So, we're going to do a different activity right now, in this one, you will have to create a conversation, 
right? You have to create a conversation with your classmates and you're going to use all the vocabulary from previous classes. Y a qué me refiero con vocabulary from previous classes? Estamos hablando de grammar, okay? With grammar que hemos visto en las clases anteriores, pasos, sequence steps, right? Imperatives, and in this scenario, should and shouldn't, right? So you're going to create a conversation in which you incorporate all of those things. Habíamos hecho una conversación anteriormente donde dábamos un paso a paso. Habíamos hecho otra conversación y usábamos imperatives. Ayer hicimos una conversación donde usábamos should or shouldn't. Ahora hacemos una donde se incorporan todas las cosas en una conversación. Obviamente, it's not going to be en cada oración, ¿verdad? En cada interacción que van a estar todas las cosas, no. Pero traten de hacer que la conversación sea un escenario work-related relacionado a un lugar de trabajo. Puede ser imaginario, no tiene que ser de algo donde ustedes trabajan o algo. Puede ser cualquier cosa como, vaya, fulanito, vos trabajas aquí, es tu primer día, y yo soy tal persona, y yo soy tal persona, y vos preguntanos, nosotros te decimos, etcétera, ¿ok? La idea es que incorporen esos tres elementos que ya vimos. Imperatives, sequence words, and should and shouldn't, ¿ok? And all the vocabulary related. Y todo el vocabulario relacionado a esas cosas, right? So, I'm going to give you six to seven minutes. Porque ya vimos que cinco minutos es demasiado, justito el tiempo. Entonces, le, le voy a dar de seis a siete minutos, más o menos. Son las y treinta y ocho. Sería a partir de las y treinta y nueve. Ok. Vuelvo y repito, no es que en cada oración van a incorporar todo, no. Pero traten de incorporar al menos una o dos veces cada una de esas cosas que hablamos. Pasos de secuencia, right? First, second, after that, next. El otro, imperatives. Ok, do this, do not do this, ok, y luego should or shouldn't, should I eat, también pueden preguntar, acuérdense, should I do this, shouldn't I do this, etc. Right? Incorporate tanto affirmatives como negatives como questions, que vaya todo incorporado, right, de alguna manera en su conversación. So, right now it's 8.39. A partir de las 8 y 40, tienen 6 a 7 minutos. Vamos a trabajar en los mismos grupos, ¿de acuerdo? Estén bien pendientes, por favor, porque muchos de ustedes esperan hasta el último minuto para entrar a la sala y entonces les desaparece la ventanita. Así que estén pendientes, ahorita les va a aparecer ya para que ingresen a las salas. Teacher, no sale la sala. Sí, que no está asignada, Wendy, permítame. Ahora. Héctor, si no se puede incorporar a la sala, solo me confirma, porfa, porque así muevo a Lucy. Ay, Héctor, no se pudo incorporar a la sala. Hola, teacher. Hola, teacher. Hola. I have a problem with my my cell phone. Hello. Voy a tratar de moverlo de la sala para que le aparezca otra, para que pueda ingresar primero. Okay. Okay, thank you. Ahorita ya tendría que estarlo viendo. No yet. Oh no. Ya lo moví. Eh, por, eh, solo tiene que aceptar para entrar ahí a la sala. Sí, no, no me sale la. Solo que lo, me aparece eh, dos veces su, su usuario, Héctor. Está conectado de, de un diferente device. No, no, no. Es que me. Espérame, lo quiero ver. Vaya, ahorita lo voy a mover de nuevo. 
Ahora sí, gracias. Ok, thank you. In, in, in your, you in your bag. Vaya, ajá, y ahí hace la pregunta, con you should help me to work on the bank? Ajá, to work on the, in the you company. Should. Ajá, y está usando el short. Should. It should. So, should. Yo, ladies, solo para ver si ocupaban ayuda y a recordarles. Cuando in, preguntan, uh -huh. in, inician con el auxiliar. Should I? Should you? Should we? Cuando es pregunta, inicio con el auxiliar. Ah, ok. Should, entonces, uh -huh. should, should you? Uh -huh. Ok. Y acuérdense que la L es muda, no suena. Solo decimos should. 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 Uh -huh. Yes. Should. 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 Give me. Should. Should. Me should. Ok. Should. Right, las veo unos minutos. Ok.
Hello, everyone. We're back. Estamos de regreso. Ok, perfect. Hi, good. We're back. Ya estamos de regreso todos. We can start now. We're going with room number one. Escuchamos la conversación de Adriana, Carlos, and Mayra, please. Hello, Carlos. Today is your first day at Nike. My name is Adriana, and I'm going to explain you what you must do in the company. Hello, Adriana. Nice to meet you. Hello, Carlos. My name is Mayra Hill. Uh, all, Hello, all, Mayra. I help you all need. Yes. Uh, can you explain me about the filling sale report? What should I do? Uh, yes. Uh, first, you, you should print. Uh, the check order production and finally su summary the same. Uh, okay. okay, thanks, Mayra. That's it. All right, very good. So, so. One. Yes, <laughs> vamos cariendo, vamos cariendo, muy bien. <laughs> yes, you incorporated <laughs> steps, you incorporated imperatives, and you incorporated should and shouldn't. So, very good. Thank you. Bueno, should and pregunta y should and afirmativo. So, very good. Room number one, cumplieron con los requisitos. We're good. Room number two, vamos con Fermán Alexander, Irma Beatriz, and Jacqueline Pérez. Vamos con su conversación. Okay. Eh, tenemos tres, de, tenemos eh, dos pasos, entonces si gusta comience Irma con, con el inicio, <ríe> con la presentación. Y luego el primer paso lo haría Jacqueline y de último me quedo yo. Ok. Eh, nuestra conversación fue de Open, open the Store. I open the Store and remove Alarm. Eh, she opens eh, store the system, check email to the, eh, every day. No sé, ahí sí. Eh, bueno, el, el inicio sería Irma, eh, no, eh, el trabajo de Irma. She is a at her, her work, works, mm -hmm. sería works. Mm -hmm. She works. Eh, she first step step first open at the store mm -hmm. uh, second step to off alarm well, what she do next is turn on the computer what she does uh, next uh -huh. does, does, uh -huh. does. Uh, finally mm -hmm. Jacqueline Finally, don't have the alarm. Repítalo, Jacqueline, por favor. Finally, we don't have the alarm. Turn off the alarm. Okay. Um, no me incorporaron should and shouldn't. Or questions we should. No, no le incorporamos, teacher. All right, me quedan en el room number uh, two. <laughs> quedan en deuda conmigo room number two. Thank you, okay. good for the effort. Room number three, Cynthia Abrego, Daniel Saravia, Lucy, ah oh, no, perdón, Cynthia Abrego, Lucy Natalie y Wendy Flores. Okay. Hello, good evening. Hi, Wendy, how are you? Hi. Where are you? Wendy, just a question. Where do you work? Uh, Curacao. Ah, okay. And which area do you work? My my field services customer. Okay. Thanks. She wants to increase her sales and wants some advice. Field and uh, product. Uh, what is your process, Wendy? Uh, services a customer and finally, uh, fees and products. 
Eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Entregar mercadería, se me ha olvidado. Deliver. <risa> delivery. Merchandise. Delivery, delivery merchandise. Um, um, a quién. Um, to customers. A quién de customer. I should, uh, sorry, I think you should uh, make more attempt. Se le entiende cortado. Se le corta, Cynthia. I think you should, le escuché y hasta ahí. I think you should try other technique with the post. All right, thank you. And that's it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Me tienen que avisar, ya saben. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, room number three. You incorporated imperatives, you incorporated steps, sequence of steps, and also should or should uh, in question, right? So very good. Thank you. We're good. Let's go with room number four. Room number four, we have Daniel Freddy, Hazel, Hazel Saray, and Salvador Emilio. Okay, okay. Okay, empezamos. Eh, welcome their partners. My name is Salvador. In the company, this is the production area. Eh, I should pay attention of the instructions, please. Daniel, every day you turn on all the machines in the production area. I'm Hazel. You write the reports of the status every morning. Okay, Salvador. What is the word should? The schedule. 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 Okay, the schedule is eight hours per day and one day off in the week. Okay. Thank Hello, you. Salvador. Hello. And after Hello, what Salvador. do I need? And after what do I need, mate? Okay, you second. And you process second, check the emails, please. And then uh, answer the most important emails and you should read slow information. And that's it. <laughs> Very good. That was good, rule number four. <laughs> you complied with the requirements. Complieron con los requisitos. Should, question or answer with should, imperatives and sequence words. So very good, thank you. We're going with room number six, Cristina, Edith, and Carla Raquel. Hello, Carla, how are you? You should, you should call me more often. Hello, Cristina, yes, I will. How are you doing at your work? Ah, wow, super tired and stressed. You should look for another job. Should you hear me to work in the company? Of course. Send me your resume right now. Excellent. Tonight I will send it to you. Night. Nice to hear you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, room number six. Good conversation. Very good. Very fluent. Thank you. Room number seven. We're going with Elsie Noemi and Isabel Hernandez, please. Okay. Hello, Isabel. Isabel. Hi, Isabel. Hello, How, How are, are you? you? Thank you. I'm fine. Um, and you? Fine, thank you. Um, who was your day? How was your day? It was the who? How? How was your day? My day. How was your day? Mm -hmm. My day was very well. Okay. What do you do? 
after work. Um, after work. I will take a bus with my friend and go home. Okay. What plans do you have for the weekend? Um, I thinking go up to the park with my family, with my child. Thank you. Okay. Um I got a, I got in a, in the beach. Okay, very good. And this weekend I go out to the park with my family. Mm. you thinking what should I do? Of course, thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Me perdí. Um, porque usted le dijo que tiene planes para ir al parque y luego le pregunta, what should I do? ¿Qué debería hacer? ¿Cuál es la respuesta a eso? Ah, okay. Um, I think uh, should you um, should I think you should I think you should um what is the pronunciation diver divertir have fun have fun mm -hmm. and your family okay very good thank you okay at least you incorporated okay. once so we we're good then. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Room number seven. Okay, let's continue with the presentation. Bear with me for a minute. Thank you. Okay, si ya se fijaron, ya no es lo mismo cuando solo estoy haciendo ejercicios de uno a uno o oraciones aisladas para dar mis ejemplos que cuando ya estoy haciendo una conversación, right? En la que incorporo no uno, sino varios elementos, right? To make a conversation, we need a lot of different elements. Como tip, como recordatorio para todos. Cuando estamos hablando en conversación, si estamos hablando en tercera persona, narrando algo de alguien, siempre las oraciones van a llevar sujeto y el verbo, sujeto y el verbo. Por ejemplo, he goes, she wakes up, we run, right? Todas las oraciones, aunque vaya una seguida, una tras otra, todas llevan el mismo escenario, right? El mismo, la misma estructura. No importa en qué tiempo gramatical se esté hablando, all right? Y siguiente, para conversaciones como esta, acuérdense, siempre que hay dos verbos a la par, uno seguido del otro, casi siempre va a ir una preposición tú en medio. Hay algunas excepciones, pero en general, por ejemplo, quiero comer. I want to eat. El verbo want, preposición tú, eat. Cuando hay dos verbos en ese escenario, lleva una preposición tú para acompañarlo. ¿Ok? Necesito sí, sí. salir. Dígame. Eh, la primera no le comprendí para la, el primer tip. El primer tip. Le voy a poner un ejemplo. Algunos me estaban diciendo. Fulanita starts the day at 7 a.m. Un ejemplo. Y de ahí la siguiente oración tendría que ser. After, un ejemplo. After that, she reads her emails. And then she drinks coffee. Later, she goes to the bathroom. Así tendría que ser. Pero me estaban diciendo. At 7 a.m., Fulanita wakes up. 8 p.m., eat breakfast. 9 a.m., drink coffee. ¿Y qué faltan todas esas oraciones? El sujeto. Solo me lo dieron en la primera oración. Uh -huh. Siempre que estamos hablando de otros, tiene que llevar la, el mismo escenario. Las oraciones son estándar y esa parte, no se, esa parte no es negociable. Siempre tiene que llevarlo para que se entienda, ¿verdad? Okay. Lo que pueden hacer. Si no quieren repetir el sujeto, si no quieren estar diciendo María, 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 en after that, María, en later, María. Si no quieren hacer eso, pueden usar un par de veces el nombre propio y luego usar los pronombres. En el caso de María, combinar. she. Uh -huh. 
Ustedes podrían okay. iniciar María, does this and this. Later she, after that she, and finally María de nuevo. ¿Ok? Pueden hacer eso para que no suene redundante. Pero el punto de los subject pronouns, de los pronombres personales, es justamente eso. Para rellenar cuando no queremos repetir los nombres propios en oraciones. ¿Ok? Ok. Gracias, teacher. Very good. Next. We're going to go to the student's manual, page 19. So bear with me for a minute. We're going to switch. List. Just a moment. That's, that's list. Eh, la lista. Ah, sí, vamos a pasar la lista. Son las 5. Antes de pasar al book. Thank you, Mayra. Vamos con Adriana María Turcios. Present. Thank you. Carlos Ernesto Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Cristina Edith Ramos. Cristina Edith Ramos. Cintia Arabella Abrego. Thank you. Daniel Freddy Sarabia. Present. Thank you. Elsie Noemi Alemán. Present. Thank you. El sí, ahora le toca quedarse usted después de la sesión, 10 minutos. Fermán Alexander Mismi. Present. Thank you. Hazel Saraí Renderos. Present. Thank you. Um, Héctor Francisco Morales. Present. Thank you. Irma Beatriz Molina. Present. Thank you. Isabel Hernández Hernández. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jacqueline Lisette Salguero. Present. Thank you. Carla Raquel Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla. Lucy Natalie Juarez. Present. Thank you. Mayra Yesenia Vigil. Present teacher. Thank you. Salvador Emilio de León. Present teacher. Thank you. Ulises Edgardo Jacobo. En Wendy Guadalupe Flores. Thank you. Jancy Maritza Solís. Jancy Maritza Solís. Okay, let's continue then. One moment. Oh, we're going to go to the students' manual. Vamos al manual, página 19. Bear with me for a moment. I'm loading this manual for you. Just a moment, guys, it's loading. Pero si ya están viendo el manual, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que está cargando. ¿Me confirman si ya lo ven, perfecto? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, teacher. Okay, it said we are supposed to go to page 19. Give me one moment. This is taking a lot. Ah, caray, se trabó. <laughs> Give me just a sec. This is page 19. We saw it yesterday. Page 17 yesterday, page 18. Finally, we get to page 19. All right, before we start with the conversation, let's talk. All right. What places are there in your workplace? What areas are there in your workplace? ¿Qué áreas hay en su, área, en su lugar de trabajo? Su lugar de trabajo, su, su oficina o su empresa, se divide en diferentes áreas de trabajo. So what places are there in your workplace? For example, in my workplace, there is an account receivable department. There is an accounts payable department. Hay un departamento de cuentas por cobrar. Uno de cuentas por pagar. There is a collections department. Hay un departamento de colectores. There is a customer care department. Hay un departamento de servicio al cliente. And there is a bookings department. Hay un departamento de reservas. There is a support department. Hay un departamento de soporte técnico. And there is an international travel department. Y hay un departamento de área de viaje internacional. 
How many areas are in your workplace? What places are there in your workplace? ¿Qué áreas hay en su lugar de trabajo? Veamos, who wants to share? ¿Quiénes quieren compartir? Veamos. Volunteers to share your areas of workplace. Salvador Emilio, veamos. Uh, okay, uh, my company have different As. areas. Has. Uh -huh. Okay, has different areas. Uh, for example, customer service, uh, custom custom service. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, human resource, uh, economy, uh, uh, marketing, secure, security, security area, and um, operations. Very good. Thank you for sharing, Salvador. Lucy, Natalie? In the company where I work, there are uh, some areas related to production, logistics, safety and environment area, and projects in construction and, and transportation. Very good, thank you. And I think that's one part of the magic of the different workplace. Not, it's not the same in every place, right? No todos tenemos los mismos departamentos ni las mismas áreas. Y aun si tuviéramos los mismos departamentos, seguramente cambian de actividades within them, dentro de ellos. Veamos Adriana María, please. In my company has a lot of areas, um, human resource, and the warehouse, customer service, logistics, um, cut, sewing, embellishment, packing, and accountable. Mm -hmm. um, in my area, system. very good <laughs> systems. Very good. Thank you, Adriana, for sharing. Carlos Ernesto. Okay, in my work, uh, some some areas, for example, uh, there are. Uh, protection and measurements, the area lines, the area mounting and maintenance equipment. Um, I don't know, how do you say metrology? Meteorology. Uh, is there, there is meteorology. Mm -hmm. uh, the area, the secretaries. All right, thank you. Totally different departments, if you notice, it's a big hand. Thank you for sharing. Cynthia Abrego, please. Están mute, Cynthia. Sorry. Where I work, we are leader company, and so we just the department art. Uh, Orden orden details, human resources, colors, art, embellishment, um, economy, and development. All right, similar to Adriana's areas from her company's area, similar areas. But you said yours is smaller, right? In the menos, it's a smaller company, Cynthia. Thank you for sharing. Herman Alexander. Okay, in my company, uh, there is a department of accounting. There are two offices of sales, one international sales, uh, other local sales, and there is uh, the department of technical assistance, 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 assistance. Yeah. Uh -huh. assistance. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for my oh, interesting. Thank you. Carla Raquel, please. Um, department of production, quality, mesh, 
Mechanic. Maintenance. 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 Process Engineering. Logist y Human Resource. Human Resources. Human Resource. Very good. Thank you, Carla. All right. Thank you for sharing, everyone. How many meeting rooms do exist in your company? In my company, there are four meeting rooms. How many meeting rooms are there in your company? In mine, there are four meeting rooms. Two big ones for big meetings, and we have two small meeting rooms for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Y otras dos más pequeñas para sesiones de uno a uno. Who wants to share? ¿Quién más quiere compartir cuántas uh, salas de reuniones hay en sus empresas? How many meeting rooms are there in your companies? As I just told you, in my company, we have four. Two big meeting rooms and two small meeting rooms. Adriana? In my company, there are nine meeting rooms. Um, three, the big one. Mm -hmm. um, the others are small. All right. That's a big company, nine meeting rooms. <laughs> That's a lot of meeting rooms. Thank you. All right, so we have a conversation here. I'm going to need two volunteers. One person is going to be Tom and the other person is going to be Orson. Si no les selecciono en este escenario, en esta ronda, no sé, acuérdense que se lee tres o cuatro veces cada sesión, cada conversación, así que siempre va a tener chance, okay? Isabel, you're going to be Tom and Hector, you're going to be Orson en esta ronda. Veamos. Okay, my name is Tom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Orson. I work for Hutz. Oh, I know that company. There is an office in San Salvador downtown. Yes, we are growing. So there are not many branches in the country yet. There are few. What company do you work for? I work for ECO, the painting company. There are 25 branches in the country. That's great. I decided one of the store the. I think my, my mm -hmm. line. Uh -huh. That's great. I visited one of the store uh, the other day. Yeah, there are six in San Salvador. We're planning on launching on in Santa Ana this, this day. There isn't one yet. Very good, thank you. Next, we have Mayra, Tom, and Lucy Orson, please. My name, my, my name is Tom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Orson. I work for Oge. Oh, now that company. There is an office in San Salvador, Doctor. Yes, we're growing. So there are not many branches in the country yet. There are few. What company do you work for? I work for ECO, the banking company. There, there are uh, 25 branches in the country. That's good. I visit one the store. The one the store. Línea de Lucy. <laughs> ah, okay. That's great. I visit one of the stores the other day. Uh, yeah, there are six in San Salvador. We're planning on launching one in Santa Ana these days. There isn't one yet. Thank you very much. We're going with Daniel Freddy. Daniel, you will be Tom. And we need one more volunteer to be Perman. You will be Orson, please. Daniel, you're Tom, Perman, and Orson. Let's start, please. Okay. My name is Tom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I am Orson. I work. 
for us. Oh, I know that company. There is an office in San Salvador, downtown. Yes, we are growing. So there are not mm, many branches in the country yet. There are, are few. What company do you work for? I work for Echo, the planting company. There are 25 branches in the country. That's great. I visit one of the store the other day. Yeah, there are six in San Salvador. We are planning and launching one in Santa Ana. These days, there isn't one yet. Very good, thank you very much. Um, solo déjenme asegurarme de una cosa. Todos los que están ahorita en el módulo 5, todos ustedes ya manejan el tiempo pasado, ¿verdad? Ya podemos hablar en pasado también, ¿verdad? Simple past, ya lo vieron ustedes. Solo para asegurarme. Yes. All right, good. Nice, thank you. Now, remember, vamos a reforzar las reglas de pronunciación de los re verbos regulares en pasado. Just to refresh your memory. Um, remember with verbs in past, regular verbs in past, there are three different rules for pronunciation, right? Así que voy a ver si se las puedo incorporar de alguna forma antes de la clase mañana, solo para refrescar la memoria. Que los verbos regulares en pasado, aunque todos terminan en ed, there are three different ways to pronounce them. Hay tres formas diferentes de pronunciarlos, ¿verdad? Id, t, id, di, right? So we're going to check that tomorrow just to refresh your memory. Very good. Thank you, everyone who participated in the conversation. We're going to do exercise number three right now. Fill in the blanks to complete the following sentences. Presten atención que en esto se han subrayado en negritas. There is y there are. Okay. So, number one, we need to read volunteers. Let's see. Ferman, you can help me with number one, please. Salvador. Uh -huh. uh, just a moment. Salvador Emilio, <laughs> number two. <laughs> no, no problem. And Carlos, number three, please. Vamos, Ferman. There are three offices in San Salvador. Correct. There are three offices in San Salvador. Salvador. Okay, there is one store in San Salvador. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Carlos Ernesto. There are not any offices in this region yet. Correct. Thank you. Now, let me just stop sharing the manual. Vamos a pasar del manual a la PPT. Just a moment. Ya me la PPT. Okay, we're going to start talking about there is versus there are. I need two volunteers, please. One person to read this section and the other one, the other one. So, Carlos, help me with section one, please. Hasta el ejemplo. Y luego, Lucy, help me with the last section until the end, please. Okay, solo que no lo veo completa. O sea, a las finales de las, de las líneas. Están cortadas. Uh, ¿Cuáles líneas, Carlos? Uh, de ese bad in sentences that hasta ahí veo um, todos los demás sí se ve sí se, se ve completa, completa. Ah, pues, da, ah ok sí están completas ah ok yo pensé que seguía ok uh, there is versus there are you probably know that the choice between is versus are depends on sentences the noun comes before the verb. Uh, but in, acá depends on a noun. Depend. Ah, pues ok. Entonces, no, si no, no la veo. Y most. Ah, uh, ok. Entonces, no sé si alguien más me ayuda a leer esa sección. Thank you, Carlos. Alguien más que se la, la vea toda la pantalla, por favor. Um, Salvador, please. Help me with the section one. Ok. There is versus there are. The probably now that the choice between is versus are depends on a noun in most sentences. The noun comes before the verb, but in the sentences that begin with there is and there are, there is and there are, the noun comes later. Example, 
there is a cat on the porch. Very good, thank you. Number two, please, Lucy. In the sentence above, cat is singular, so it requires there is. Example, there are many opportunities to learn at this company. In the sentence above, opportunities is plural, so it requires there are. Don't let the word many throw you off. Concentrate on the noun. All right. Eso es lo más resumido que podemos poner cómo se usa there is y there are. Basically, there is es para singulares. Y there are es para plurales. Ahora bien, si ustedes lo van a traducir a interpretar el español, los dos se dirían igual. Hay. Ok. There is a house. Hay una casa. There are many houses. Hay muchas casas. Los dos se traducen como hay, right? La diferencia es en la sección en el lado del inglés. There is is for singular. There are is for plural nouns. Ok. También algo que les va a ayudar a identificar eh, es que van a ver el A. El A o el AN, que es uno o una. Se les indica que están hablando en singular, por tanto, ustedes van a usar there is. Ok. And there are, por lo general, cuando es plural, uno, el noun va a ir en plural, y dos, no van a ver el a o an por ninguna parte, indicándoles que es un plural. All right? So, let's see some examples. You have to select there is or there are to complete these sentences. We have two, four, six, eight. So we have eight opportunities. We need eight volunteers. Tenemos ocho, uh, ocho espacios. We need eight volunteers. Ocupamos ocho voluntarios. Uno para cada uno. Usted se la va a escoger si le pone there is or there are y completa la oración, la ley completa, ¿ok? Iniciamos. Mayra, you will be number one. Cynthia Abrego, you will be number two. Héctor, you will be number three. Adriana, you will be number four. Faltan cuatro más. Thank you. Fermán, you will be number five. Lucy, Natalie, number six. Salvador, Emilia, number seven. Carlos, Ernesto, number eight. Iniciamos, please. There is a teacher on the bed. Correct. Y aquí lo tenemos. There is a teacher on the bed. Por lo general, cuando ustedes ocupan there is or there are, por lo general, van a ocupar algún tipo de preposición para especificar a dónde hay eso que ustedes están hablando. Puede variar, pero por lo general sí se van a fijar que siempre va una preposición en una oración donde va there is or there are. Number two, please. There are two books on the floor. Yes, on the floor. Number three. There is a car on the floor. Very good. There is a scarf on the floor. And here it is. Scarf. Bufanda. Okay. Bufanda. Number four. There are four pictures on the wall. Okay. Four pictures on the wall. Thank you. Number five. There are many books on the shelves. 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 Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank yeah. you. Shelves. Estantes. Estantes. Number seven, no, six. Number six. There is a book on the bed. Mm -hmm, correct. There is a book on the bed. And there you have it. Number seven. Uh, there is a laptop on the floor. Yes, there is a laptop on the floor. Number eight. There are some papers on the floor. Very good. There are some papers on the floor. Okay. Y si se fijan, todas estas oraciones no solo llevan there is, there are, llevan justo lo que yo les mencionaba, una preposición de lugar. Okay. En este caso, todas llevan on, right? Pero puede variar. It can, it can be a different one, right? For example, there are four, yeah, four meeting rooms. In my company, okay? Ya no ocupo on, ocupo in. There are four meeting rooms in my company. So la preposición va a variar, puede cambiar, pero idealmente siempre va a ser, va una preposición de lugar va a ser parte de sus oraciones con there is or there are, 
okay? Next, you're going to answer the question that you have. Van a leer la pregunta y la contestan con cualquiera de las opciones, positiva o negativa, when there is or there are. So we have two, four, six, eight. Same scenario, we have eight sentences. We need eight volunteers. Ocupamos ocho voluntarios. Esta vez ustedes van a contestar esas preguntas. Leen la pregunta y dan la respuesta según ustedes la crean. So, Cynthia, you will be number one. Mayra y Esenia, you will be number two. Hector Francisco, you will be number three. Um, Salvador Emilio, you will be number four. Freddy Daniel, you will be number five. Isabel, number six. Carla Raquel, number seven. Irma Beatriz, number eight. Iniciamos. Okay. Are there any eggs oh, in the... I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Huh? Are there any eggs in the fridge? In the fridge. No, the fridge. Mm -hmm. No, there aren't. Exactly. No, there aren't. ¿Cómo sé yo qué es eso? Parte de la respuesta está en la pregunta. Está ocupando are there. Yo sé que voy a llevar esos mismos dos elementos en la respuesta. No, there are not. O no, there aren't. Number two. Are there any onions in the fridge? Fridge. Fridge. Uh -huh. uh, no, they aren't. Veamos. Onions. Yeah, I don't see onions. Alguien me se voy ahí. All right. I don't think no. that. <laughs> Thank no. you. Number three. Uh, is there any let lettuce? Lettuce. What? Lettuce. Um, lettuce. Mm -hmm. in, the fr in the fridge. And no, there isn't. Very good. No, there isn't. Yes. Then we have number three. Number four. Is there any milk in the, in the fridge? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are. Mm. Oh, yeah. Milk. Uh, in. Okay, yes, there is. Ajá, there is. <laughs> yes. Si ocupan el is en la pregunta, el is va en la respuesta. Ok. Yes, there is. O oh, no, there is, and si no hubiera, right? Very good. No, that's two, four. Number five. Are there bananas in the fridge? Yes, there are. Correct. Number six. Is there a cake in the fridge? Yes, there is. A ver, there is a cake. I busted. Oh, yes, there is a cake. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Number seven. Are there uh, any lemons in the fridge? Mm -hmm. No, there is no. Mm, repitamos la pregunta y veamos la respuesta, ¿no? Are there any limos in the fridge? Oh, yes, ya lo vi. Yo creo que sí son. Yes, there is. Uh, yes, there is. ¿Por qué me está diciendo is y la pregunta lleva are? Oh, sí. Uh -huh. Ah, pues sí. Yes, they, they are. There are. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes, there, yes are. there are. Correct. <laughs> es lo que les decía. Y parte de esto entra en lo que nosotros llamamos en inglés active listening. Active listening es que no solo, no solo oigo la pregunta la escucho, le pongo atención porque el auxiliar, y esto para todas las, todos los tipos de preguntas en inglés, niños y niñas, el auxiliar que se ocupa en la pregunta most likely is the auxiliary you will use in the answer, si es, afir, si es negativa por ejemplo, alright si hay el verbo to be en una pregunta tenga por seguro que usted va a usar el verbo to be en la respuesta y por lo general es el mismo, si es is, lo ocupo is en la respuesta si es are, lo ocupo are en la respuesta pero te queda eso, yo right Number eight, please. Mira, baby. Is there any pizza in the freezer? Uh, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. 
Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do right now. Right now, you're going to make three sentences using there is and three sentences using there are, talking about things that are in your workplace. Van a hacer tres oraciones con there is y tres oraciones con there are, refiriéndose a cosas o áreas o personas de sus trabajos. Okay? I'm going to give you three minutes. Le voy a dar tres minutos. Son las 35, las 38 podemos iniciar. You have one more minute. Le voy a dar un minuto más porque la mayoría los veo anotando todavía. Así que, pero los que ya las tengan, levanten la mano e iniciamos con ustedes también. Veamos. Thank you. Iniciamos con Mayra y Esenia, please. Muy bien. Okay. In my world, there are two, two million rooms. Mm -hmm. In my office, there is an, a fame. Uh, there is one fame. In production plan, there are uh, 16 sewing machines. Okay. Um, eran tres y tres. Tres con there is y tres con there are. Oh. No hay nada más. Vamos con Salvador Sorry. Emilio, please. Ok, means there is in a desk next to the bathroom. Uh, there is a printer in per office. 
there is a LED TV in the wall in the middle room. Uh, there are two new trucks in the parking. There are a chairs in the middle room and next to the, the human resources. Uh, there are a lot of cell phones in the touch department. All right, thank you. Very good. We got the six sentences, Salvador. Thank you. We're going with Hector Francisco, please. Um, there, there are two cars in my area. There is a laptop for me. There are many PCs, PCs assignments. There are two copies machines. There is a microwave. Micro microwave. Microwave. Bed. And there is a oven. Very good. Thank you. Now we're going with Lucy Natalie Juarez, please. There is a fire emergency system in the company. There is a water tank for fire emergency system. There is a conference room in the plant. There are 11 storage tanks. There are four loading racks. There are four filling lines. Very good, Lucy. Thank you for your sentences. Herman Alexander, please. Is there a sampler in your office? Yes, there is a sample. There is an apple in the tree. There is a book in the river. Or don't book, but. A boot. <laughs> but, 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 see, uh, a book. Okay. Are there many computers in your house? There are not many computers. There are too much food in the table. There are two box shoes at my office. All right, Carmen, thank you. Adriana Maria. There is an office in Antiguo Cucatlán. Mm -hmm. There is one cafeteria. There is a soccer file. There are many sewing machines. There are 1,600 employees. And there are three parking lots. Very good, thank you. Let's see, we're going with Cynthia Abrego, please. Okay, there are two televisions and there are three mannequins. There are many computers. There is a coffee maker and espresso machine. There yeah. is a computer, <laughs> there is a projector. Very good, Cynthia, thank you. Daniel Freddy, please. <clears throat> is she the new partner? What brand is your watch? Is your hair brown? How many glasses are there? How many computers are in the office? How many cars are in the parking lot? Very good, Daniel. Thank you. Let's see who else is missing. Elsie Noemi. Um, solo, solo hice dos, teacher. Why? For uh, yes. are, are there two laptops in the office? Yes, there are. Are there the reports? No, there aren't. Mm, but we were not in questions. No estamos trabajando preguntas todavía con there is nothing there are. Solo estamos hablando afirmativas. Um, Elsie, but thank you for the effort. Estaban bien las respuestas, Elsie. Thank you. Next, let's see. Um, Hazel ya me dio las suyas. No, teacher. Veamos, please. There are many kids in my house. Mm -hmm. There are many students in the school. There are many trees in the park. There is an umbrella in a car. There is a battery in my book bag. There is a notebook on my desk. Very good, thank you. Next, let's see who has not given me. Wendy Flores, please.
Wendy está por ahí. Si no, tenemos a Carla Raquel. Carla Raquel ya me dio sus oraciones. Hey, teacher. Ahora. Iris. Eh, <risa> <risa> es que como sabe la compu, no, casi no le hallo a eso. Okay. But there is candy for the children. Okay. There is a new employee my job. Mm -hmm. There is a packet for you. The, there are two cats in my house. Mm -hmm. They are two windows in my house. Okay. And they are seven in... Ahí me había quedado. In class. <laughs> okay, seven people in class. All right. Thank you, Carla. Adriana okay. Maria, please. Ya las había dicho. Ah, es que le vi la manita levantada de nuevo, Adriana. <risa> Lo sabía. Cristina, usted ya me dio sus oraciones. Cristina está por ahí. ¿Será que se desconectó? Entonces, ya nadie falta, ya todos me dieron sus oraciones, ¿verdad? Isabel, please. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a print in the office. Mm -hmm. There is a boss in the warehouse, and there is a person of security in the office. Mm -hmm. And there is a bathroom in my workplace. And okay. they are there are many employees. In my warehouse, there are many liquor bottles, too, and there are many computers. Okay, thank you. And Carlos, please. Okay. There are five printers at the office. There are three tools on the machine. There are two microwaves in the kitchen. There is a tester in my bag. There is a laptop in my desk. Y there is a cell phone in your desk. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who participated. Now, we're going to be talking about the negative form of there is and there are. Okay, so I'm going to need help. I need four people. Bear with me for a minute. Deme un minuto. Esta presentación no se ve lo último. Give me one moment. All right, ya se las comparto. We're gonna need four volunteers, okay? First person is going to read this block. Second person reads this block. Third volunteer este, y la cuarta persona el último block. Okay, so we need four volunteers for reading this. Salvador Emilio, help me with the first block, please. Me ayudo con el primer bloque. Necesitamos tres voluntarios más para leer, veamos. Where are the hands? Hector Francisco, me ayuda con el segundo bloque, por favor. Mayra Yesenia, me ayuda con el tercer bloque, por favor. And then we need one more person for the last one. And Isabel, the fourth block, please. Iniciamos. Okay, negative, negative form. The negative is formed by putting not after is or are there is not a horse in the field there are not a children in the school there is not a three in a tree in the garden there are not two elephants in the zoo very good thank you entonces nos dice que para hacer la versión negativa lo único que cambia la estructura es que el not va a ir después de el verbo to be Cualquiera que sea R o is, después del verbo to be, va al negativo not. Ok. Block number two, please. We almost always use contraction when speaking. Uh -huh. okay. Contraction are there's not, uh, there isn't. 
-hmm. There are not, there aren't. Correct. Thank you. We almost always use contractions when speaking. Esto es bastante común en el inglés hablado, la versión verbal. Se ocupa bastante la contraction. There's not or there isn't. Es lo mismo que decir there is not. O there are not, usted lo abrevia, there aren't. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué les digo en la versión hablada, la versión verbal del inglés? Porque en la versión escrita, idealmente, sobre todo si son documentos formales, no se abrevia, no se ocupan contracciones. It's, es mala educación. Right? So, cuando estamos escribiendo, correos o en el chat, idealmente no se ocupan contracciones. Right? Number four, please. No, number three. Block number three. There aren't with any. When they went to indicate, indicate that a zero quantity of something exists, we use it that there are any people at the party. There aren't any tree, tree, tree in my street. Correct. We, Thank you. There aren't with any. When we want to indicate zero quantity of something, we use there aren't any. Ok, para la forma negativa normal decimos there isn't o there aren't. Pero si queremos decir que hay cero, cero de algo, vamos a decir there aren't any. Ok, en block number four, please. We also use this structure with uncountable nouns. There isn't any water in the swimming pool. Uh -huh. There isn't any sugar in my coffee. Yes, very good. Any, para indicar cero, ninguno o ninguno, ninguno o ninguna, o nada, nada de. Se puede utilizar en las dos versiones, para countables and non-countables, right? Por eso es que ustedes lo ven ahí en los dos escenarios. Countable things, for example, people, it's countable. Two people, three people, four people. Pero water, por ejemplo, water tal cual es non-countable. Yo ocupo el mismo negativo, any, para indicar que hay cero. ¿Ok? There aren't any people at the party. No hay ninguna persona en la fiesta. There isn't any water in the swimming pool. No hay nada de agua en la piscina. ¿Ok? So in that context, you know that you can use it for both scenarios. En ese contexto, se sabe que lo puedo utilizar en las dos versiones, en los dos escenarios, ¿de acuerdo? So, negative sentences. Take a look at the desk. Miren a lo que hay en el escritorio. Que sí hay y que no hay en ese escritorio. Y así van a contestar las preguntas que están acá, a, a completar las oraciones. There is, there are, the, perdón, there is, there are, there isn't or there aren't, o there isn't any or there aren't any, dependiendo. Okay, so we have two, four, six, seven. Ocupamos siete voluntarios para esta. Levanten las manitas y se los asigno. One by one. Okay, Mayra, you will be number one. Salvador, you will be number two. Germán, number three. Adriana María, number four. Daniel Freddy, number five. Ocupo dos más. Daniel Freddy is number five. Cynthia, number six. Cynthia Abrego, you are number six. Y number seven, se lo vamos a dar a Elsie Noemi. Number seven, la última Elsie. Ok, iniciamos. Number one, please. There are three pencils. There are three pencils. Very good. Number two. There aren't an orange. Ajá, de nuevo. No, there, there isn't an orange. Ajá. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There isn't an orange. Y ese an no está dando la pauta que es is. Very good. Number three. There is a book. Correct. Number four. There aren't two avocados. Avocados, yes. There aren't two avocados. Number four, no, number five, there, number five. There aren't three crayons. Mm -hmm. Number six. There are two bananas. Very good. And number seven. 
There is an apple. Very good, there is an apple. Now, same scenario, we're going to create three sentences using there isn't and three sentences using there aren't. Ocupamos tres oraciones con there isn't, singular, negativo. Tres oraciones con there aren't, sin, uh, plural, negativo. Okay? I'm going to give you three minutes. Son las 55, las 58, iniciamos. Tenemos un par de minutos todavía. Ok, si ya tienen al menos dos, una y una, podemos iniciar. No es necesario que las tengan terminadas todas. Let's see. Do we have volunteers? Thank you. Vamos con Adriana María. There isn't a clock on the wall. There isn't any water or the glass. Mm -hmm. There isn't a pizza in the oven. There aren't any children in the park. Only. Very good, Adriana. Thank you. Well done. Cynthia Abrego, please. Okay. There aren't five microwaves in the kitchen. There aren't three printers in the conference. There aren't eight laptops in the development. There isn't three, three microwaves in development. Si estamos diciendo three, no puede ser isn't. There isn't, sorry, there isn't a microwave uh -huh. yes. the conference. There isn't a mannequin. Uh -huh. There isn't a coffee maker. <laughs> Very good, Cynthia, thank you. All right, thank you everyone who participated in this one. We're gonna finish here for tonight. Vamos a quedarnos hasta acá por esta noche. Solo pasamos lista la última vez. Give me one moment. Let's see. Jueves 30. Iniciamos con Adriana María Turcios. Present. Thank you. Solo espera que sean las 10, Adriana, y se desconecta. Carlos Ernesto Hernández. Present, teacher. Thank you. Cristina Edith Ramos. Cintia Arabella Abrego. 
Present. Thank you. Daniel Freddy Sarabia. Present. Thank you. Elsie Noemi Alemán. Present. Thank you. Fermán Alexander Mismit. Present. Thank you. Hazel Saraí Renderos. Present. Thank you. Héctor Francisco Morales. Present. Thank you. Irma Beatriz Molina. Present teacher. Thank you. Isabel Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Jacqueline Lisette Salguero. Carla Raquel Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Yesenia Lanza. Lucy Natalie Juarez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Mayra Yesenia Vigil. Present. Thank you. Salvador Emilio de León. I'm here. Good night. Yes. Good night. Ulises Edgardo Jacobo. Wendy Guadalupe Flores. I am here. Good night. Good night. Yancy Maritza Solís. All right, so that's gonna be it for tonight. Have a good night, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Lo veo mañana. Feliz noche a todos. Night, teacher. Night. Good night, teacher. Night. Hi, ¿cómo está Elsie? <laughs> está en mute, Elsie, tiene cerrado el micrófono. No la escucho, Elsie, tiene cerrado el micrófono. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cuénteme, ¿cómo está Elsie? Bien, teacher, gracias a Dios. Un poquito cansada, pero ya mañana es viernes. <laughs> ya lo logró, ya estuvo, ya se, ya se fue. <laughs> Ya solo unas cuantas horas sí, más. Sí. Rapidísimo. Sí. sí. Mire, qué increíble. Ya estamos sí, terminando la segunda semana. Uh -huh. Yes. Ok. Eso estaba, eso estaba viendo. Uh -huh. Sí. Pues ahorita, teacher, aquí querían, eh, bueno, estaban analizando así un poco la, la tarea número 6 ya de la unidad 2. Ajá. Ajá, y, y justo es eh, sobre el tema que hemos estado hablando. Sí, eh, ya le, le, le capté bastante la, la idea con su explicación, uh -huh. solo que es la parte que me ha costado un poquito durante, durante este tiempo. Vale. Lo, el uso de... Lo vamos a ver juntas, permítame. Me confirma si ya ve la pantalla él, sí, por ahí. Sí, sí, sí. Vaya, entonces. Solo que cargue esto. Eh, okay. Tarea. La dos. Ah, Ajá. sección dos. Va, la, la tarea C, perdón, de la unidad. Sí. Eh, sección uno o sección dos. La sección dos. Ah, la va. uno ya, ya la terminé. Ok, permítame. Acá. Tarea número 6. Ok, tenemos un minuto. Acá estamos. Vaya. Leámoslas. El, si la lee, lee la número 1 y después me dice usted cuál es el error. Y la escribimos. Ajá, vaya, estaba viendo porque dice de a star in the city. O sea, allí, como está diciendo que un, una y, y bueno, de a, uh -huh. o sea, no, no, es ¿Cuál como es el si error? dijera una, ¿verdad? Ajá, ¿cuál es el error entonces? De rar, de rar, Si dice, Ajá, ah, usted ya dijo cuál es el punto eh, principal. Para ¿sí? mí, ah, porque está en plural. Ajá, para mí está en plural, de rar. Vaya. Ay, la, eh, in the city. Pero, 
el nombre, el sustantivo no está en plural, está en singular. El sí. Entonces, ¿cuál es el error? Exacto. Ajá, eso. Que no tiene el singular, entonces el, el, el nombre. El verbo to be el, está en plural. Tiene, ¿Cómo sería la oración correcta, Elsie? Sí. There is a mm -hmm. store. Correct. Exacto, Elsie. Sí. There is a There store. There is. Uh -huh. ah. Yes. Sería ah, bien okay. diferente, uh -huh. sería Ahí bien diferente pregunto. si el sustantivo terminara en una S. Ahí el error sería la A. De entrada, usted ya sabría que el error es la A si tuviera una S aquí, pero no lo tiene. Entonces, le dice que el error es el verbo to be. Very good. Muy bien, el sí. There is a store in the city. Vamos okay. al número dos. Ok. There is one office. Bueno, there is one. Allí él lo tiene el nombre porque está en plural. Office. Mm. In San Miguel. Eh, en, el Ajá, en el sustantivo, en el nombre. ¿Le quitamos qué letra? El nombre. Uh -huh. La S. Exacto. ¿Cómo ah, tendría okay. que decir? There is one office in San Miguel. Exactly. Correct, Elsie. Number three. Okay. There is the distribution centers in Milopan. Habla de tres. There are. Ahí Correct. Está bien, bien. Mm -hmm. Yes, muy ya bien. Ya lo voy comprendiendo. <ríe> sí. Veamos el siguiente, el número cuatro. Uh, veamos el número There is a new. Ahí en el nombre porque está en plural. New. Exactly. New There is a new. Porque dice. Office. New. Very good. Exacto, oh. Elsie. Solo aquí okay. tenés ese. La número there, cinco. There are no persons to work. Um, el to be. There is. There is not a person to work. El to be sería el que está malo. Porque dice there are ver? not person. En vez de person sería people. There are no people to work. Si no, y aquí ya les estoy mostrando ah. la respuesta que da la plataforma. Ah. Aunque le voy, a, le, voy a, le voy a decir, este not está equivocado. Solo tendría que ser no, sin la T. There are no people to work. Pero se deja, se equivocaron y así quedó. Ajá, pero es there are no people to work. Eh, allí no, no se necesitaría la contracción de lo que hemos estado hablando, teacher. No sí, la, le, legalmente sí la puede usar y estaría perfecto. Pero para efectos de la plataforma sería solo así. There are not people to work. Uh -huh. There are not people to work. Uh -huh. Para que la plataforma lo tome. Pero sí se puede legalmente, para gramaticalmente hablando, sí se puede hacer lo que usted dice. Yes. Uh -huh. ¿Eh? Sí, es que eh, ese problema eh, cuando es así de, 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 de completar, complementar, uh -huh. eh, se da a ver. Más que todo quizás por el apóstrofe que, que, bueno, en el caso de mi computadora, como que lo tira al, al, al otro ah, lado, a la sí, inversa. Sí, así me pasó a mí también. Ajá, ya me... Sí, por <risa> eso. Me había pasado ajá. que... Algo que siempre les recomiendo yo, es si cuando vean ese caso que, que hay, un, hay un apóstrofe, por lo general la vamos a ver arriba también, en el, en el, algo abreviada, alguna palabra. Entonces, le vamos a copiar y pegar de la palabrita arriba para que nos agarre que esa es la correcta. Uh -huh. Eso no falla, niña. Perfecto. Ok. No. Perfecto. Y de ahí. Sí. Uh -huh. Sí, y de ahí pues lo que hemos estado viendo las oraciones, ¿verdad? De, uh -huh. el de, eh, ya. Igual, este... Si sí, sí, se fijó, ahora, ahora solo estábamos haciendo there is, either are, there isn't, o there aren't, la versión negativa y la versión afirmativa de, de singular y plural. No hemos tocado preguntas todavía porque esa es la clase de mañana, Elsie. Pero 
si me ayuda el hecho de que usted ya sepa Ajá. usarlas, porque entonces usted le puede ayudar a los demás cuando estamos trabajando en grupo, porque hay gente que sí se pierde o se les olvida, así como usted me dijo ahorita, pero tiene una A y el, si no tiene la S, pues el problema es el verbo tuyo. Así, hoy, ahora usted ya lo identifica, usted Ajá. puede ayudarle a otro, ¿verdad? Pero, ajá, entonces mañana vamos a ver ya las preguntas eh, de sí o no, utilizando are there or is there en ese escenario, ¿verdad? Y solo como para refrescar ahorita lo que le mencionaba, la estructura, ¿verdad? Es para los afirmativos, siempre va a ir there is. Si yo veo que hay un A y el siguiente, el nombre está en singular, está bien, ¿ok? Para there are, por lo general, nunca va a llevar la A. Esa es, es como una alarma que yo tengo, que si nunca va a llevar la A porque son, son plurales. Y siempre van a terminar en la Ajá. S. Entonces, eso a mí me da la, la indicación. Y lo otro, para los negativos, exactamente la misma estructura, solo que le agrego el not después del verbo to be. There is not, there are not. Cualquiera de los dos escenarios, pero el negativo va después del verbo to be. ¿Ok? Ok. Y el any, okay, sí. que le mencionábamos en sí. El any es cuando queremos decir que no hay nada de o no hay ninguno de. ¿Ok? Eh, es que esos son los contables, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Contables eh, y no contables. Para decir no, no hay contable. nada. Es lo mismo decir no hay ninguno de o no hay nada de. Uh -huh. Y las dos, en los dos escenarios, contables y no contables, usted va a utilizar la misma palabra, any. Mm -hmm. Any, que es ninguno o nada. ¿Ok? En esos dos mm -hmm. contextos. Ok, no sé si hay alguna otra duda, Elsie. Eh, no, teacher, yo creo que su explicación es, es bastante eh, fácil de entender, solo que es como... Eh, repasar para que no se olvide porque eh, las estructuras sí. más que todo verdad en sí suele pasar armar una, uh, uh, pero el... yo la, sí la quiero felicitar bastante Elsie porque usted participa activamente y la mejor forma de, de que se nos quede algo es repitiéndolo y repitiéndolo por medio de la práctica verdad a veces fuera de la clase ya no nos queda chance de practicar ni de repasar con nadie entonces, saquémosle provecho, Elsie, saquémosle el máximo provecho de la participación en clase, porque es donde yo tengo mi oportunidad de saber si lo estoy haciendo bien y si no lo corrijo. Y siempre que usted tenga dudas, Elsie, o que no le quede claro algo, o que yo no me haya explicado bien, dígame. No se vaya de la clase si no lo ha logrado entender. Siempre dígame porque yo con gusto lo repito, Elsie, ¿de acuerdo? Sí, yo quiero agradecerle porque, porque es excelente en la manera de dar la clase. Y Gracias. siento que estoy aprendiendo. Estoy aprendiendo. <risa> Gracias, créeme que a mí me encanta, me encanta enseñar inglés. Me, me encanta ver cuando la gente va progresando y hablando. Así veo. <risa> Así que Hasta gracias por nota. participar. <risa> Así que cuídese, él, si la veo mañana. Descanse claro, para sí, el último sí, día de la semana. <risa> Adiós. Usted también. Feliz Gracias. noche. Tío.